Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Adobe Live. Uh, before we begin, we'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming from today, and also pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, we're here with brand, identity designer, educator, creator, Jeremy Muro. What's up, Jeremy? How are you doing? Hey mate, good to have you, good to be here. And um, yeah, hey everyone, thanks for watching. <laughs> What's up everyone in chat? If you're watching over on YouTube and you want to say hi to us, if you have questions as we're going along, we're hanging out for an hour. We're talking all things brand, identity, design, research, um, competitor analysis. Like how, how do you start? How do you, how do you continue this process? Um, it's going to be a great time. We're going to nerd out for a while. Um, and if you have any questions while we're going along, we'd love to hear from you. Jump over to behance.net slash live. That is the chat that we'll be monitoring today. Um, I'll start with an apology to Jeremy. I told you I'd give you a count in when we were doing the intro and my mic was off. Um, <laughs> So sorry about that. <laughs> it's your idea. It's always a good start. It's been two weeks since I've done a stream. A bit rusty. Um, but, uh, but hey, there, there we go. Um, we've had you on the stream before. Um, it was actually quite a while ago. Um, but for those that aren't familiar with your work, um, I mean, I mentioned rattled off a couple of things. Brand identity designer, a creator, but you're also creating all this content, online things like Skillshare and educating people in design and all sorts of stuff. So. You'll do a better job than me, so why don't you talk a little bit about what your what your life is and, and what you're doing now? Yeah, sure. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me, and I appreciate the opportunity once to come back on again. Love our streaming, but um, yeah. Hey, everyone. My name's Jeremy. I'm from Sydney, Australia. Uh, I'm 27. I'm married. I always have a kid now, which is cool. Um, but yeah, I'm mainly a brand identity designer, but I also educate designers. So if you're a junior designer or just starting in freelance, um, <clears throat> I have a lot of content on Instagram. Um, that teaches you how to you know, run a business just like I do. I also have design courses on Skillshare. So if you're interested in learning how to do logo designs, brand identity, you know, how to design a website and Webflow, stuff like that, then you can check out my courses on Skillshare. But I just love helping designers to become better, to think creatively, to think objectively, and um, you know, obviously make more money and, and do it full time. And, and that's um, what I've been doing the past you know, eight to nine years now. And I just love it. Love it creating content, love designing for brands, and um, and also do free YouTube tutorials as well. So if you're into that, then um, yeah, that's what I'm all about. That's awesome, yeah. Um, and uh, Johanna is looking after us today in chat, so she'll share some uh, useful links and things like that. Definitely check out Jeremy's stuff. One thing that I've picked up from our small amount of time of hanging out with each other is you're very ef you're a very efficient uh, <laughs> designer, like even like just in kind of setting up for this one, like how quickly you're working, how quickly you can get things done. Um, very impressive. I'm even like, hey, what's that tool that you were using to get all this stuff set up? I'm learning stuff, making notes and things like that. Um, so yeah, definitely check out um, a lot of the tutorials and things like that Jeremy has on offer. There's some great stuff. Um, and we're gonna get stuck into some of it now. Um, so we were chatting about what our stream should be all about. Um, we've got Jeremy's mm -hmm. come up with this cool idea. I'm very excited. It actually like converges on my two worlds branding design for a conference, um, which is super cool. Uh, big part of what I was doing, you know, pre pandemic and still now is working on conferences like Adobe Pretty Max, nice. I worked on semi permanent, I used to run creative mornings in Sydney, all sorts of things like that. So um, we're going to geek out and nerd out about all this sort of stuff and talk about um, how you would brand um, mm -hmm. and give an identity to a conference. There's so much to unpack so many touch points. Um, 100%. Yeah, how would you how would you start this? Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I haven't branded uh, <laughs> too many conferences, to be honest. I just thought it was like a good challenge and a good idea. Um, you know, I've been on digital conferences. I remember, I think it was not last year, but the year before, um, TDI the, the, is a design conference in Brisbane. They did a virtual thing, and I was really inspired. They had like cool like platform online. Mm. I think that was really cool. Um, you know, I've been to you know semi permanent in the past and had uh, uh, like long time ago and stuff like that but i just think it's, it's it's essential and with you know the virtual world and then the physical world like we need to make sure that we're um designing something that you know has it all connected but um but yeah today we're going to be doing a concept that I, I made up it's called cyberland originally i had the idea of like doing vidland but it's basically a, a conference for online streamers in the creative space so people who are like designers, artists, illustrators, you know, people in the you know creative world um, that want to be a, a video creator or a streamer, basically, and share their craft, like share their process, sort of like how we're doing now. Um, so that's the the main idea. And I've just got some notes here. We've got so the main user, um, you know, we've got male and female, age 18 to 35, so a young audience. Um, I just put like you know creative content creators, designers there. 
Um, the keywords that we're focusing on today is sort of creative, bold, experimental, and connected. And sometimes finding words can be cliche, and sometimes I actually go to like Pinterest. So for example, I'll jump onto Pinterest, I'll come in here and I'll type in like, you know, brand keywords. If nothing's coming to your head, and you know, I'll start to like look for stuff. Um, sometimes you'll get like lists pop up where you can find things. Um, so I always try and like look for that. Or um, if you just type maybe some like keywords or... So for example, we've got one here, you know, and then you can use that as inspiration as well. Um, so sometimes I do that to get some keywords. Mm. And then for the deliverables, I was just thinking like, as you said, like there's so many touch points. So for me, it's like, I'm gonna write down, okay, what are the most essential things? So obviously for a brand identity, we need typography system, colors, logo design, which we're gonna do today. And then things like posters, you might need a landing page to, so people can sign up to get tickets, um, banners and signage or wayfinding if it's a because of the physical location, you will need that. Mm -hmm. um, social media posts. So for example, if you're promoting on Instagram, stuff like that. Um, lanyards, maybe you, you need the ticket um, to show who you are or VIP section or whatever it is. And then, yeah, social media. And you could, there's heaps of other stuff we can do, you know, like little tote bags and gift packs and flyers and stuff. So we'll see how much we can do in these two sessions this week. But, um, but that's what I'm thinking at the moment. Yeah, it's kind of like the core, what are the core things that people might need? And like lanyards is one of those things and tickets is one of those things. Like you just get kind of a ticket, but it's like, especially for a designy kind of conference, like, you know, artists, illustrators and stuff, they're going to expect some like cool looking stuff. Like, <laughs> of course. you know, I hate to say it, but like Instagrammable <laughs> like photo, like, you know, you kind yeah, of want the, the lanyard can't just have your name and your title on it or something. Like it's got to be, you know, part of it. Some people collect those lanyards. Like I know people that yeah. have like oh, wow. hang them up and collect them and things like that. That's yeah, cool. total designer <laughs> nerds and stuff. But you know, the wristbands instead of that is like another approach to it. So yeah, yep. you've all really, and stuff all sorts like of stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, cool. That, that's so cool. That's interesting that they collect it. Um, cool. And then also obviously like content, I'm, I just put these down just to like get my mind going. So it's like, okay, I need to have like a speaker lineup sponsors, like conference schedule about, just to like, we need, cause we need content. So I'll have to make all that up as we go. Yeah. We'll see how we do. All right, so moving on, I wrote down some messaging cause you need some key messaging for like, you know, uh, marketing and branding and stuff. So I just wrote these down. To be honest, I don't know if they're any good, but the way I work, do it is like, I just think of like, what's the core message and, and who are my audience is. And then I just do a lot of dot points. Um, usually I'll jump into Notion, drop some dot points or just drop it in Illustrator or whatever app you're using. Mm. And then that just helps me so I can start to use, you know, type and text to, around my um, design. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. And it's great to like have those written down. Like even if a client's come to you and said, hey, we need, you know, this stuff for a conference, you're already thinking about this. Like you're gonna need some messaging, you're gonna need some tiles. And they might look at it and say, oh, that's not really us. And that's great, because that can open mm -hmm. up the conversation. Cool, what, what are you? Like, what would you mm. prefer? Like, do you wanna write it together? Do you wanna have some, you know, do they have a copywriter? Do they have like a marketing manager or whatever? Um, yep. And they can maybe inject some extra words and you're like, yeah, you're probably gonna need this. So let's start thinking about it mm -hmm. at the beginning. And and that's when you can pitch like brand discovery or brand strategy and start to, mm. and that's why I teach designers, like you need to learn copywriting because it's part of the, because then you can offer that to your clients as well. You know, even if it's like mm. basic stuff, you know, like it helps the clients think creatively. Mm. Um, but yeah, totally agree. All right. So basically before we start designing, what I've done is actually gone and looked up some competitors. Now, when I do competitor research, what I do is basically go on to Google and I start looking, you know, I'll go to Google and type in, um, you know, design conference 2022 or whatever, or best design conferences or whatever that is. And I like, I'll look around and find some stuff. And then basically I just want to look at the website and what I'm looking at is I'm looking at colors, looking at the logo, looking at the topography, you know, um, looking at icons, the way they brand themselves. That one looked a bit boring. Um, <laughs> I was thinking the same, I wasn't gonna, <laughs> wasn't gonna say anything. Depends on the broad term of design, like sometimes you get to like yeah. an architectural website or something, or yeah, um, even the even the UX one. This, this has been the same website for a couple of years, I think. Yeah, exactly. So, Easy to navigate though, they know what they're doing there. <laughs> true, true, you gotta think of conversions, right? Um, but basically that's what I'll do, and I'll just like, you know, so for example, I went and did some research. So I, there's like, for example, VidCon, it's based around YouTubers and, and creators. And um, they've been around for years, but I just like look at how they design, you know, nice type, nice colors here. Um, just looks really cool. 
And I'm just extracting, as I said, those things because we want to dif differentiate ourselves. We want to be distinctive. Mm -hmm. Another one is create a conference. Um, and they're not all design-based conferences. They're, they're a bit similar. Like some are, are more about like ad advertising and marketing. Yeah. But yeah. I just want to be distinctive and different. So I'm just looking and I might get ideas and stuff. I might even like use some of their content just as a placeholder and then later I can change it. Yeah. Um, so, so I'll just, I'll quickly go through these really quickly. Um, so you can see here, content marketing world. Uh, we've got vid summit here. Mr. Beast, which is cool. <laughs> um, speakers. <laughs> Where does he get his money? Um, Mr. Beast <laughs> is the great, once you go down the rabbit hole, like if you click oh, one man. Mr. Beast video on YouTube, that's all you get like forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, legit. He's, so much. he's amazing though, man. His content is insane. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Hey, I'm just a quick, quick check in with chat. What's up for everyone joining us um, here with Jeremy Muro. We're going through brand identity and uh, design for a a conference um throw any questions you have in chat i can see annika gareth is here um channa is yeah. here as well johanna is looking after us as well sharing lots of useful links and things like that <laughs> um but yeah don't hesitate to ask some questions as we're going on uh, johanna actually asked us a question earlier on to get us started um what's your favorite deliverable to design for so we're talking about all the deliverables you might have for a Ooh. conference i think tote bags was mentioned at some point that used to be the darling yeah. of the design world um but what about you jeremy <laughs> what's your what's your what's your favorite uh, um I think posters for me. I like doing posters. Yeah, because cool. you can be more creative. You can be creative with it and like fun, bold typography. Um, yeah, that I think that's for me. Nice, lovely. What about you, chat? If you're a designer in the chat, like, and you're designing deliverables, is it is tote bag still reigning supreme um, as what you would love to put on if your client allowed you, or if you're doing something uh, yourself? Um, let us know. So, um, so yeah, so after looking at some of those sites, you know, I basically just screenshot, I have this cool screenshot tool called Snagit Editor, and I can just like print screen and you can see like, I can just literally do that and like paste things inside Illustrator really fast. This is coming back to that efficiency stuff I was talking about, like, you know, this is like a very, like anyone can do this, but, um, you know, printing the screen and it's saving somewhere and then going and finding it and then grabbing it and dragging it in, it can actually add up quite a lot when you're, you know, in this phase. Um, Hundred percent, and of, it's of doing things. Fast. And it's just this is so so fast. Um, so that's yeah, super cool. It helps me a lot, and that's why I love it. But um, so yeah, what I do, I mainly take the logos, and then you can see here. I just took some of the main ones, like we got no code. That's Webflow, Creative Conference, Pax, Vidsummer, etc. And so I have an idea. Okay, what are the colors they're using? I want to use something different. So mm -hmm. I can see yellow, red. Um, you know, black is is a common one, and um, we got like this pinky. So I'm thinking maybe we should go like um like a greeny yellow, or maybe um we can go for blue or something like that yeah so, i think that's super cool i'm just I'm sorry interrupting you all the time no, no, but um it. but yeah just competitor analysis like is quite an interesting thing like for those that don't have experience like with advertising this is like very common thing that like has come from the advertising world like literally putting up like you know what are the competitors what do they look like um how do we differentiate our, ourselves of course it is part of branding and graphic design and all that sort mm -hmm. of stuff but um, like often from an advertising perspective, they'll often start there. Like, you know, the very first thing that they'll do, you know, look at it. Is there a gap? What's our gap? Mm. Are we, are we going to change, you know, the product based on like mm. what the competitors are doing? Cause it's too hard to get into. So I just thought that was quite an interesting thing. I love, you know, graphic mm. design, borrowing, you know, and owning, um, different approaches from, from sort of different, slightly different mediums or neighbors and things like that. Yep. hundred percent. That's why we, and we've got to think like that cause you got to think sort of in business terms and marketing terms as well as designers. I think it's essential. So, yeah. So basically, the next step from that, what I do is I start creating a mood board. So this is one mood board I've got going. I was starting to work on another one, but I uh, didn't finish that one. But I really like this um, sort of style, the bold colors. I, I think the the blues are really speaking to me. Blues, yellows, oranges, and um, yeah. I just basically for me, my process is that I I love going on Behance. So for example, Behance, I'll go and type conference event. If you type conference, it'll pop up with stuff. So you can see identity or event, etc. cetera. Um, and then I'll just start to find stuff. And then once again, I'll just like screenshot things. Mm. So if something like really, like really stands out to me, um, you know, for example, this one, I can go here and, you know, look at the stuff. If That's I'm digging cool. something, I'll just get like a screenshot. Yeah, I'm really digging like the arrows and topography, simple mm. shapes, very minimal. And then I'll just come in here and like start to like build out 
um, a mood board. I and guess. you use InDesign for this, just kind of placing it in these squares and things like that? Yeah, basically, um, you just make boxes, really. It's just a box, and then all I'm doing is using a clipping mask. So I've got my F1 keys mapped to, like, clipping masks, compound masks. Of course. So <laughs> of course all I do is do. press F1. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, but to make a clipping mask, you go object, and then you go... Um, where is it? You have to select, and then you go clipping mask, and then make. And that's how I do that. Yeah, nice. Very good. Um, yeah. yeah, so tote bags does seem to be reigning supreme. Um, Gareth, uh, so when uh, they still had their presses, I'm guessing that's like printing press of some kind, uh, mm -hmm. their wife had a different one each week. Wow. Different custom tote bag each week would be uh, pretty baller. Wow, that's pretty cool. Wait, for like, like how long was the conference? Was it for a conference or something else? I, I think they're just saying that they had a press, so their wife got a like new bag each time, like a, a custom wow. bag <laughs> every time. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty that's cool. pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this is basically what I'll do, and I'll just build out a mood board, etc. I'm not gonna make this full mood board here, but um, that's my process. So and then from this point, I just start extracting, you know, elements or fonts and stuff. But um, so I'll probably pull some colors, like maybe even this green or like teal color. I'll probably like steal that. Because, you know, it's not copyrighted. We can use whatever color we want. Mm. So, um, so from that, I basically did some sketches. So, I started to write out some words. So, I did like a little word map. Put Cyberland there. I started thinking of like, you know, um, put, put land. And what does land represent to me? Like, okay, circles, shapes, a globe, a sky, mountain. Um, or maybe we, you think about conference. Okay, what other words can I use instead of conference? Summit, convention, symposium, uh, forum. Um, you know, and that's that thing about like tech, can I, maybe I do like a robotic thing or like a really, um, you know, more like lots of little connecting circles or lines or something, you know? Mm. So this really helps me start to visualize stuff. Um, like video, I always think of like a play button. Um, but maybe if I think of like a gadget or something moving or something like, you know, it just helps me get ideas out. Yeah. No, I think that's a, like a really underrated, like process to go through at the beginning because you never know where you're going to end up and I can see those like thought processes going down you kind of run down a line until you're out of ideas then you go okay let's go a different path and then like kind of keep going um, yeah. but yeah I usually operate in the in a similar way yeah love that man it's awesome and then from that I basically did some sketches obviously they're not that many sketches I should have done more but um, you know do a couple pages three pages whatever it is but I basically just start writing out the word so you can see what does it look like in uppercase what does it look like in, in lowercase Mm. Um, and then I start like I had an idea of like what it for, we just have like for the icon it's like a it's like a C made out of shapes or like maybe we make it into like a like a land or something interesting. Mm. Um, and then I start playing with like lockups with text. Okay, so maybe I can have the word conference in there or what does it look like if I have like twenty twenty two in there, etc. Um, cool. But yeah, but now we're just gonna start designing and, and and I'm gonna take some of the ideas from the sketches and and see where where we land. Nice. That's a that's a, that's a fun bit, and um, we've jumped over to um, Illustrator. I see uh, for that yep. for that kind of process. Yeah, hundred percent. Illustrator is the, uh, the the way to go for for anything when it's like logo related or design. That's my like my go to. Yeah, oh, that's super cool. Um, and have another question from chat. When creating mood boards for projects, how do you approach crediting designers, e.g., so you can reference them later? Is that something? you do for the client presentation. Uh, did they say credit designers? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Um, to be honest, I don't think it's necessary because the, it, like to the client, that doesn't mean anything to them when you're presenting to them, to mm. like your design, uh, the mock-ups. So basically you can put in the corner like, oh, images just sourced from Google and online. For, yep. Like yep. For, for educational, inspirational purposes. That's all you're using, you're not copying it. You're basically extracting um, ideas from the mock-ups or the mood board. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, for me, I don't really, I don't really credit in t when I'm just showing the client when it's a, like a stylescape or mood board. But yeah, I don't think it's that important that they they don't really care. Like to be honest. Mm. Yeah. And if the, the final product is going to be so far away from where you started at, at the beginning. It's not like, well, we're going to take that. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to put it over here. There's going to be a lot of um, a lot, iteration. Yeah, a lot of iteration, a lot of feedback um, and so on and, and so forth. Um, this is cool. We're onto, onto fonts and you obviously have like quite a lot of fonts already <laughs> installed. Any particular places yep. that you get your fonts um, or do you 
go through the mammoth library. I'm overwhelmed by the amount of fonts. I, um, oh but... man, I, I, I did a cleanup recently. So you can see here, I've got um, Typecase and I only have, I have over 7,000 inactive. You can see in the top <laughs> corner. And I only have 700 now because my, it was just lagging and stuff. So I was like, this is too many fonts. So I had to like un, like untap from some of them. So yep. yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot to go through every time you're doing a project. <laughs> 100% man. But my three key um, spots I get fonts is basically Adobe fonts. So this is a great place. Um, so I'll type in you know, future or something. And I just love finding fonts in here. The second place would be Google fonts as well. Um, and I love how like you can filter through categories and things. So I can filter font properties. You know, maybe you want like thickness. Um, and then this like this really helps me find some stuff like if I'm looking for something specific. And then the third place is actually Envato Elements, one of my favorite sites to use. They have like millions and millions of fonts. Um, actually, maybe not millions, but thousands. So for example, I typed in future because maybe I want a futuristic look, and they just got like heaps of fonts. Mm. And you just pay one subscription, and you get like all these fonts like you can use. Like there's so there's so much stuff here. Or if I type in like uh, geometric. You can see you get some nice ones here. So for me, that that's mainly where, where I get my fonts at the moment. Yeah, nice. That's cool. But yeah, I, that's so many fonts. Um, Annika said in chat, 8,422. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. The, the, th the thing is, we don't even use uh, hardly any of them, like all of them, like... Yeah. It's always, yeah. <laughs> I remember back in the day, the thing to do with like, you know, you, you work at a studio or agency for, for a little while and then someone say, oh, you can take the fonts with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone, had, someone had throw it on a hard drive and it'd take four hours to, to <laughs> transfer over by, uh, via USB to, um, yep. and then suddenly the, you know, the next agency has those fonts. Uh, definitely, definitely not a good, uh, <laughs> definitely not good for piracy and things like that, but it was definitely <laughs> something I saw in my time. I've seen it too. My teacher back in my when I did um, college, he had thirty a photo of thirty thousand fonts, and he just gave it to all of us. Yeah, <laughs> in the class. Yeah. Oh yeah. In, yeah. In oh, design man. school, it's kind of there's there's no rules. Um, yeah, no yeah, rules. There's lots right. of that going on. Dodgy, dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm basically doing here is I'm just um, going through like all some fonts that I feel like um, represent the style I want to go for. So I'm looking for bold fonts, creative fonts, and I'm, I'm gonna customize it a little bit. So you can see here I've got different ones, like um, for example, this one's like belly display. I've got Azo Sans, BN Dime Display, um, Bogam, um, Fat Frank here on the bottom. Um, you know, we've got a lot of different ones, and they all have different characteristics. So basically, I just like chuck a whole bunch of fonts and start to work with the the, the logo type first. I think that's the easiest thing to do because the icon will take a bit longer. Um, but I'll just, I'll start to filter them out, like process of elimination, like what, what is giving me that vibe? Like I'll go back to here and it's like, okay, what's the vibe? You know, it doesn't feel bold, creative, um, you know, experimental. Is it interesting? Um, and then I'll go back to like my mood board and like, and like my competitors, it's like, okay, these guys are using like very simple sans serif font. So maybe I should go for a, a serif font, mm. you know, or, or maybe I want to be more modern and just like stick with the geometric and maybe customize it, you know? So you got to ask yourself those questions. Um, I really like here, like some of these like bold condensed fonts here. I think these are really, that's really cool. Um, even I think over here with these ones are more like condensed, but um, expanded. So that could yeah. work as well. Seeing that kind of that flat sort of stretched when people are like kind of getting really playful with the the kerning and and actually stretching letter forms it yep. seems to be a bit of a trend at the moment but that's the other question as well like is this a one-off conference that has to make sense for the event in three months and then it goes away or is this mm -hmm. you know going to be a, a semi-permanent or max or something like that that yeah you're going to want it to you know the the owners or the client you know they want it to they want to do it every year or every six months mm -hmm. or something then i think you want to try to avoid trends a little bit more because obviously the trends will change and is it going to look dated? Um, 100%. And that's why trends trending. shouldn't be used as like a, as a, cr a crutch. As a crutch, thing. yeah, I was going to, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
and you know maybe you have your branding around you know around one thing but some of your like we're talking about creating posters or lanyards and things like that like maybe that can can have a bit of a sub brand where the the, the type is a bit trendy there's gradients <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know all the stuff that people like um, 100% but you've still got this core brand that can kind of still sit without without that kind of um, bit of trend going on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly man all right so um, now what I'm doing I'm just selecting some of the fonts that I'm digging and I'll start to um, that one's all right as well and then I'll just start to pick, you know, I'll pick a couple and then start working with them. Um, so, and sometimes you got to also see it. So what I do, I just select everything, Alt, Shift, Duplicate. Then you go to Type, Change Case, and go Uppercase. And I can easily see what it, like what it's looking like. You can also align stuff as well. So what I'll do is go to Selection, and you can just align just to like clean, make it look cleaner a bit. So plenty of different options. Um, I do like the the Nimbus Sands extended. I think I'm getting inspired from um, this this here. Um, mm. So we've got Nimbus Sands extended, and then we've got like um, it's got a whole bunch of different things. Like it's got uh, bold, and you've got like Nimbus Sands um, condensed as well. So it's a bit more things. So I think I'll play around with this. Yeah, it's something important to look for as well, especially if you're getting kind of those like external fonts is how big is the font family? Like does it have Correct. extra bold, does it have blacks, does it have black italic, like all these other things because you have a lot more wiggle room, um, you know, the the larger the family. Mm -hmm. 100%. And I think I like this one as well. This one feels a little bit different. All right, cool. So I want to play around with this. And so you can see some of my sketches. I really liked this lock up here, mm. um, as you can see. And it looked—it actually turned out it looked like a smiley face with two eyes. So, <laughs> yep. So I, I don't know. I might play with that. <laughs> and um, and yeah, this is what I, this is how I work in Illustrator, just like really fast and you know playing around with stuff. And you know, you just got to basically just experiment, explore, mm. see what you can come up with. I think the music stopped, by the way. Oh yeah. Okay, Let's it's back on. Low. Some of the songs are a little bit more chill than others, and ebbs and flows. Um, a lot more wiggle room the larger the family. Yeah, that's exactly right, Annika. <laughs> um, what about you, chat? What do you use? My approach is very similar. Um, you know, I like to do the same thing. I want to get as much down as quickly as possible. And the quickest thing for me to use is, is Illustrator. Um, but um, I know Annika and uh, Johanna as well in chat, um, both sketch a lot like, um, you know, illustrate also have illustration skills and things like that. So is that like how you would approach it? Or are you the same? Do you want to get into the into the fonts? I, I start thinking about the shape, the logo, similar mm. to the approach that Jeremy would take, but I'm interested to hear like people that um, you know, that might illustrate a little bit. Do you spend more time sketching before you jump onto the computer? I'm curious. Let us know. It's a great question. Everyone's got a, a bit of a, like a different flow, you know? Mm. Yeah, I know people that like won't get into the computer, won't look at competitors, like won't do anything of that. They, they want to spend like X amount of kind of hours even um, mm. sketching before they touch anything because um, they don't want to be influenced too much by the competition. To be completely mm. transparent, I do the opposite. I do exactly your approach. I'm like, what's everyone, <laughs> what's everyone else doing? Like, where yeah. do we sit? Where are the gaps? Um, mm -hmm. What looks cool? What you just resonates with me at the beginning? Like, um, what website works? What's the experience? What's the language? Um, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like, outside of a conference, right? Like, you might look at, like, there, there was a TikTok conference in there before. You might be looking at what's the... What's the other branding around like the conference or what's like a podcast's branding or how mm. do people kind of approach their like visuals? You know, this is a streaming conference, right? So it's like, well, what are streamers doing? Like mm. what, what overlays are they doing? What even mm. like, I guess games are they playing if we're, if we're putting games yes. in and stuff like good questions. Um, you could, you, I mean, but of course you can do that till the end of time. So how much time <laughs> do you have? <laughs> exactly. That's always the question. Yeah, you got to use your time wisely, right? Or else mm. you get stuck in, you know, 
and not delivering the results and your clients waiting you know? <laughs> and how long would you on that thought like how long would you i i you know i guess in it it's hard to say a typical project because it's not always a typical project but you know, mm. how long i guess from a percentage perspective would you want to spend in i guess research or maybe this phase or do you usually kind of you know group it all together i think you need at least like you know three days to like go through researching and stuff and then what i do is i'll create um like a stylescape and then i'll pitch the stylescape and present like three stylescapes to the client and then um, we pick a, a direction and then i basically work on like the logos and stuff mm. um so you, you it's you always want to get sort of affirmation of like you know what direction you're moving in and stuff instead of like but I think if you if you research too much you might get in you might get too influenced by external sources yeah like as you were mentioning and that can be a problem um, it can influence like your designs and that's why I think I think spending time sketching after you've done sort of that research will help as well mm. I, I really like how you just stretch the circle um, which is quite yeah, cool because like, I, I, I'm sure it was intentional, but like, um, <laughs> because the font is stretched, right? Like, so yeah, it really matches oh. really, really well, which might've been an accidental, happy accident. But, um, <laughs> happy he, accident. He stretched it out and I was like, oh yeah. Cause it's like, cause the Cyberland is a stretched out font. And so it actually makes heaps of sense that the mm. circle will be stretched out. Yep. Exactly. So I'm, I'm really digging these, these, um, lockups at the moment. Like they look interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll basically do this and just like keep experimenting. Then I'll start like chucking on color and type and, and stuff like that. Um, but you just basically want to explore like every option you have basically and, and play around. Mm. But I just want to make sure that like it, it looks creative as well. So we have, you know, it's not too like just static. Like lining the L with the B there, I can see. Yeah. Line that up. Yeah. Um, checking in with chat um, as we explore. Uh, Annika says, I do spend time sketching out ideas for logos when working for clients, but illustrations really depend on the kind of branding it is. I do look at competitors too. I look at, I, I look at competitors, um, but try to look away as well. Yeah, and that's another thing you can do. You can kind of spend some time looking at competitors, throw it in a file, have a think about it, and then, you know, take a walk, go, to, go back to the notepad, you know, go back to the iPad or... Um, mm. sketch some stuff out and kind of jump around. I honestly definitely jump around a bit. Um, it's not usually like a completely like a linear process. And of course, sometimes you have a great ideas when you're not thinking about it too. So having a little bit of extra time to step away from the computer and things tend to come to you. Yeah, hundred percent. And for me, like going for walks and doing yeah. other stuff apart from design, that's going to really like help you. Yeah totally agree um and johanna says yes uh sketches come first helps me explore the world of the brand and idea before i dive into references that said i do ebb and flow between the two states yeah same as me jump around a little bit and sometimes you get a great idea after you've spent like two days exploring one direction you're like oh i'm gonna have to go back <laughs> <Start again. laughs> but that happens yeah. so this is kind of cool it's like um that kind of C and L. That's quite interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just playing around. <laughs> yeah. That's the best part of design. Like, you just, like, come up with sweet, wacky stuff. and. Mm. That's super cool. And I'll let you know as well. We're, we're actually a bit over halfway. I promised I'd let you know when we're halfway. We're a bit, little bit over halfway. We've got about 22 minutes left to be um, specific. Minutes. I know. It goes very fast. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but now it's probably a good time to actually mention that we were chatting before the stream about um, potentially doing some portfolio reviews as well. Um, so if you're watching in chat and you would like uh, Jeremy uh, to check out your portfolio or check out a specific piece of work, you can just share a link with us. Um, you can share it here in chat now. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll check it out on Thursday. So we want to just um, see if a couple come through so we can allow for time. Um, but send it through to us. If you're watching on YouTube, you can just share it in the... YouTube comments, or you can jump over to the Discord. There should be a link down there, um, and you can share it in there as well. And we'll collect a few, and we will check it out. I 
think I'm really digging these at the moment. Mm. It depends on like the, the client. Like I know this is a fictitious brief, but it's also like, so is the client going to want something a bit safe? Are they happy to go a little bit crazy? Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it comes back to the target audience as well. Definitely. Always, you always, that's how you always like ask yourself the, the right questions, you know? I think even this one looks good, this font. Um, all right, let's, let's see if I can customize this a bit. So what I do, I usually like do control shift O and that basically gives me outlines and then, you know, I can start to rearrange things and shift things around. Um, so usually I'll look for like little spots that I can add things. So, you know, I'll just grab the pen tool and like maybe I want to add like a little cut or something. Mm. Whoa, back. And then I just pop it white and like see what that looks like. So looking to ways to kind of customize the, that's kind of cool, a little cut thing there. Um, yeah. To customize it so it's not just a font, trying to make it a little, make it a little bit your own, make it a little bit um, so you can have some ownership over it. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I love doing because, you know, people just, you know, get a font and, you know, it might look similar or it might be, look a bit boring or like whatever it is, you know. Mm. And so maybe I want to like oh, take this and um, use it for something. Very cool. Annika says, um, it's really important to gauge when you can use stock assets and imagery to be more efficient too. That's yep. true. Very true. I uh, know, just playing around. That's why I like using Envato and stuff as well. Like I can just go on there and like, if I need to find assets, um, for example, like, can go to like graphics or graphic templates and type in um, geometric shapes, for example. And so like I can just download like even like the 3D stuff, like saves me time doing everything from scratch. Mm. So you've got like different, you know, shapes and even patterns as well. Um, yeah, that's cool. So is that subscription, this isn't an ad for Evado, but is that subscription, does that cover like the fonts and everything? It's like a monthly subscription. Just kind Yeah, of literally everything. If you if you pay um, annual, you basically get it for like 16 bucks uh, a month. But if you don't, if you just do normal, it's like 30 bucks a month. But um, yeah, and you get fonts, you get um, stock video, video templates, music, sound effects, add-ons, a whole yeah, bunch wow, of so different stuff. Yeah, it, it, it's a fair bit. You're like, it's, it's crazy. I'm just using like the shape builder to the cut off things. Just shape builder. Um, yeah, that was the uh, <laughs> last time. <laughs> yeah, you used it last time. We actually did it. We actually did a stream last week, which was tips and tricks um, for graphic designers. And that was um, we asked uh, Jason Grant, who um, it works for Adobe, um, what, what oh. like the most underrated feature um, in Adobe Illustrator was. <laughs> most for underrated. He's like, yeah, he's like shape builder. It's so good. Um, so we had a little bit of fun playing around with that. That's so cool. I love that. It did actually blow my mind the first time I'd seen that. That was one of those features <laughs> that kind of snuck in, you know, when a feature kind of sneaks in, you just yeah, don't, and yeah, you don't you know see about someone, it. You don't know about it. I didn't know about it when it must have released or something. Um, and it was actually our, um, Andrew Hockerdell who showed me that. Um, oh. um, who's a stream, streamer here on Behance, um, does amazing stuff. Um, and he was showing me and I was like, what is this add-on? And he's like, no, it's not an add-on, it's this button over here. <laughs> um, and it kind of blew my mind a little bit. You thought it was a plug-in, man. <laughs> I did, I did. I, you know, you think you know everything and then you blink and then, you know, 
something cool's come through that like people adopt and it's just the way you do things and you can't live without it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Annika is saying in chat, yeah, Shape Builder. Uh, most people use fast Pathfinder, but never use Shape Builder. Yeah, that's me. I'm just so used to using Shape Builder and sending things to back and then forward and then grouping them yeah, and then cutting yeah. them out and then saving that like piece and copying it and bring it over here and and uh, you know it always looks like a mess except for the final bit. But um, <laughs> it's really fun once you get into it. Hundred percent. Yeah, I just think whatever's the fastest tool, like, I think that's the best one to use. Yeah. Uh, Alright, I decided to um try it, test out another font real quick. And then, like, I like, see how I'm, like, just customizing some things. Mm. Getting used to the music. Mm, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know it off by heart. Um, <laughs> well, oh, you've been using the same playlist, man. <laughs> it's because we've um, we've we started with this huge, huge, huge pay playlist for streaming, but then some of the songs kind of like a little bit of talking in it or something, or like the bass just kicks in when you're trying to talk to someone and oh, like, you can't obviously. hear anything. Yeah, so we've I kind of you. culled it over time, um, which actually made the playlist a lot smaller. Um, mm -hmm. Smart. But they're all safe. <laughs> safe <laughs> music. Um, we've got another question here. What are the essential questions to ask your client when building their brand? Ah, uh, good question. Um, essential question. Well, it's good to get an understanding of like what's their future goal. What is what is their future state, and can you help them get from where they are to where they want to be? So, understanding their vision and their goals, then you need to understand their values as well. That that helps um, you know paint a like picture because they're going to be standing on their beliefs, and that's going to help you you know with your look and feel as well. It can help add words and stuff. Um, also, ask like okay, what like where are they going to be, um, what platform are they going to, do they, do they have a print store? Is it an online shop? Like mm. understand where are they going to be selling um, mm. to their audience? So then you can design appropriately for that specific place. And that, you know, there's plenty of other things you need to ask, like understanding the business, business stuff and um, you know, what's their offering? What's their unique positioning? Like how are they going to stand out? Do they have a unique service or, or, or like product something you know different mm. um yeah you just you gotta you gotta have that mindset yeah i think that's great yeah us usp is very important like what makes you different what makes you special what do you believe in mm -hmm. um is always good to know and i think nine times out of ten you ask a client that um they'll talk they'll talk to you for about 10 hours about <laughs> the answer the answer to that question and that's when you know you've got a good client uh, might not be the easiest to work with but that's when you know you've got a good client um, yeah. because they're passionate about the project um, uh, yeah the first question is what's your budget that's funny uh, um, I, I don't know if I can say your name username but okay Okay, Ovex, <laughs> Art, <laughs> thanks for that. That's actually something I was thinking as well. Yeah, often I think, uh, what's your budget? What's your timeline? Um, yeah. are you and, what's the, and what's the scope as well? What's scope. the scope? Yeah, what do you expect me to deliver? Like when we say branding, right? Because, um, you know, someone might think that includes printing of all the lanyards. Like, and you're like, no, I'm just, oh, doing, yeah. like, nah, I'm just, doing, the, I'm just doing the mock-ups. Like I can, I can liaise with a printer. I got, you know, it's great to have printers that you uh, have a relationship, that you trust, that you work with a lot, that you send a lot of business. They're more likely to look after you um, and help you out and spend more time with you and things like that. But it's like, but no, that does not include printing costs. That's like in addition. They're like, what? Spending five grand, <laughs> ten grand with you, like, and I'm not getting anything money. printed. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's a whole other thing. So it can be very, uh, yeah, I'd say it's critical to kind of have those conversations at the beginning. So, yeah, when Jeremy mentioned scope, it's like this is what you will be delivered. Um, certainly, that was often a problem with um, web design for quite a long time. It doesn't seem to be as big a problem now, but like when that was coming around, yeah. it's like, yeah, design this website. And then you design the whole website, and they're like, great, where is it? And you're like, <laughs> Where is I've it? designed it. You need someone to develop it. They're like, what? I googled my, oh, I googled, okay. I googled my, um, my field, and it's not coming up as a top search results. Why is that? 
Like, well, oh, the SEO, they want you to have be to, on <laughs> so some SEO page one. <laughs> yeah, I want to be on page one of Google. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and um, not knocking clients or anything like that, but it is, it, you know, it's part of your job, right? To make sure it's clear the expectations of what you're going to do in what sort of time frame and all sorts of stuff like that. Good times. Good Lots times. Of <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, we have about eight minutes left for today right. ladies and gentlemen so if there are any any questions now's the time to throw them in make sure we can get them answered as we're rolling along and a reminder that we'll be back on thursday thursday our time if you're in the states it might be wednesday evening um but we're back in two days same bat channel same bat time So, so for this approach, I sort of um, customized the type a little bit, made it, made it a little bit more fun, um, but still readable, still legible. We got the word conference there. I can probably like, you know, lighten that up if I want to. Mm. Um, got the 2020 there. Um, and th I was playing around with this, but that wasn't working. And I think this... This one here is the probably other best option as well. Um. Yeah. I think you could do a lot with that. Um, just that like stretched half circle, or like semicircle, half circle. Um, this one. As well. Yeah. Like you could kind of do, like have it as itself. Um, I noticed earlier on you were kind of doing a couple of circles like next to each, a couple of those half circles kind of on top of each other next to each other, I think in an yeah. earlier iteration as well. Um, like you can see making a pattern out of that. You can see that being like, you know, even during the conference, like using that as a design element, like just basically everywhere. Mm-hmm, hundred percent. And you, I think, and that, and that's the cool thing about brand identity is like trying to find ways to like add, um, yeah, patterns and just like assets and things you can use to make it look really cool. Yeah. Now I can use the blend tool like this. Oh, look at the blend tools getting some love today. That's cool. Yeah. Like using love blend the blend tool. tool. <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Like instantly you can kind of start visualizing some of the patterns and things you could do and mm -hmm. um, different ways. You, could, you know, I mean, even thinking about like interstitials, uh, fancy word for the videos between when people are talking and stuff like give mm -hmm. that to a motion designer or something and say, yeah, like this is part of the branding. These, yeah. Yeah. These transitions for the half circles, you know, for the, um, all sorts of stuff. Um, always love like latching onto something like that. It's like, oh, cool. Actually, you know, if I was a designer and someone had created the brand and they're like, yeah, basically this half circle with type on top of it is like, you know, this key element. And it's like, all right, I'm going to go nuts with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of fun playing with that. line stuff up so I just like and then yeah we can take this and then you know play around with it and see um, I can like rotate it I like using the rotate tool as well so I press R hold alt left click and then hold shift to move it and then I don't know go like 40 and then just press Control D, and you can make like stuff like this. Yeah, that's super cool. Oh, you know, we can cut the um, we can cut this, and then do just find the center point, and then I'm uh, not 180, uh, 90. Like there's so yeah, many. Yeah, so you start getting like really interesting shapes here. Yeah, and I think we see it a lot. Like uh, people that do geometric stuff, we see it a lot. Like cutting circles and you know stuff like this. Um, oh. 
Uh, Philip in chat saying, what, that is sick. I'm assuming you're talking about um, how to create those geometric uh, patterns. Um, so maybe you could just show us one more time, Jeremy, because it is a really neat trick. You can do it any shape. Um, mm -hmm. You actually do it in Photoshop as well. Uh, slightly different process, um, creating a new layer each time. But um, it's much easier to do in Illustrator, I think. Um, yep. So yeah, if you could show us off again, because uh, sure. it is a cool trick if you haven't seen it before. Yeah, so basically you want to get any shape. And then what you want to do, you want to press R. So R is for the rotate tool. Um, if you go to, I think, object or one of those, you'll find it. But basically, you press R. And then what you want to do is you want to find the center point. So for example, let's just say this is um, the middle of this circle. You can see the center has like a point. So I can bring this. Uh, I'll just bring this up like this. I'll just line it up. And then I'll press R. Then find the center point. Hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. Left click once and you'll get the rotate box. And all you want to do is you want to select something that's a denominator of 360. So it's completely even. Um, so I think, yeah, usually like 40 or 60 or like 12 works. Um, so I did 40 and press uh, copy. It's going to duplicate. And then all you do is press control or command D for duplication. And then that's how you get that effect. Very cool. Yeah, it's super fun to play with and do and... Yeah, you can do it with basically any like object and shape. Um, so yeah, yeah, super cool. Thanks for showing us again that again. Um, <laughs> That's right. It is super cool, and you you can find yourself just making crazy shapes. You could just make some crazy crazy shapes. Um, <laughs> I used to have a file on my computer with um, in Illustrator, which was just pages and pages of stuff like that, just because they look super cool. <laughs> oh, I love that. So cool, man. Oh, we've only got a few minutes left, so we've got about two minutes left, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad we get the little tip out of the way at the end. Hopefully, Philip made your day a little bit, something to try out. <laughs> it's always fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, looks like you're introducing some colors. Yeah, so basically, I'm, I just stole some colors for there. I might, I'll probably, um, yeah, I might have to go customize some colors. But what you can actually do is like usually I'll select a color. So maybe I want this green, but it's not the one I want. I'll go to my color guide. And um, you can switch it to like show warm and cool. Mm. And so I'm just gonna click on that and then click the drop down and you can get all like these colors. Um, so maybe I want, maybe the high contrast one. So like these, these ones here, I'll click the little plus thing there. And then I basically, it makes it in my, um, my swatches. So you can see my swatches now. And then, you know, maybe I want this color palette or Yeah, see what works. Or maybe I want to um, add some more like blue into it or green. You know, I can play around with that with the, my color, um, just the normal color settings. And so that's what, what I'll do when it comes to color. Sometimes I go on like Color Hunt and like other websites. Mm. Um, but yeah, for me, like that's like one of the ways I come up with color. And then like, you know, I'll just start playing around. So it's like, what if we. You know, um, and I'll have to spend time like exploring and that's cool. We um, we might need to leave it there. We're gonna we otherwise we do run the risk We're of getting cut off. We've gone through a ton today, All right. um, <laughs> which has been super cool. Um, wonderful hanging out with you as always. Lots of lots of tips, and this has been a great great process we will be back on thursday as well jeremy thank you so much for hanging out with us no worries thanks so much mate appreciate it and um yeah excited for thursday hope you guys join in and um finish off this with some cool mock-ups and stuff oh and before i forget um let us know if you want to review a piece of, of your work or your portfolio as well jeremy has kindly offered to do that on thursday so you can send it through to send it through to us um how are we going to do that? Through Discord, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Send it through Discord uh, or maybe, um, you know, on, on the socials as well. Uh, let us know if you're interested. You can also send it through on the day. Um, and if we, if we can get through it all, uh, we will check it out. Thanks again, Jeremy. And thank you, everyone. And we will see you all in two days. Bye. See you guys. Bye.